room back there and turn the light on and you not know, back there. Is that the storage? The storage room, yeah. yeah. Then I walk around it. <coughs> Quarters. To your office. What do you say? Walks into her office and finds him dead on the floor. What did you do when you saw him face? I just wanted to wake up. Did you shake? I just felt so weird. Okay. Police headquarters is a seven-minute drive from the office, so responders are on the scene very quickly. Investigators know they have to find out as much as they can about Randy's life in order to discover who has ended it. So we know that Randy and Teresa were high school sweethearts. By all accounts, very popular, joined at the hip kind of situation, and everyone kind of assumed right after high school they would get married. Turns out, Randy had a different idea. He wanted to join the military, and when he did so, Randy was a Marine. And as soon as he got back from his service, sure enough, he and Teresa became husband and wife. To the Stones, independence seems an ideal place to raise a family, and they soon have two growing children. Randy and Teresa Stone have separate interests as couples often will. Randy enjoys sports, like basketball, and he likes his guns as well. He often goes to his in-law's property to target shoot, while Teresa raises the children and runs the household. She appears content to take on all the duties required to keep a family going. But of course, everyone needs some form of leisure. For Teresa, it seems to be shopping. Psychologists have established that shopping functions not only as leisure, but also as a way for a person to regain a feeling of control over their lives and to reduce anxiety. We don't know exactly what Teresa is undergoing emotionally in this period, but we know how stressful managing a household can be. While Randy and Teresa frequently do their own things, they share interests as well. These largely revolve around the New Hope Baptist Church. It's one of those churches that was described as a very, very close-knit congregation. They shared meals together. Uh, it was not unusual for people to spend three, four, five, six days, four nights a week at this congregation. And Randy and Teresa were incredibly involved. This level of involvement in the church, especially a church of the Southern Baptist tradition, brings with it a commitment that is nearly total. Randy and Teresa Stone took the idea of serving very literally. The Southern Baptist Convention was created in 1845 when there was a split with the larger Baptist church over slavery. The profound conservatism of the movement appeals to heartland people like the Stones, and that the convention allowed individual churches to set their own doctoral degree appealed in particular to Randy. Randy volunteers with church treasury work to keep a close eye on the books. He was heavily involved in the church finances as treasurer. He served on the board. And he teaches Sunday school where he shares his faith with the children of New Hope. Teresa sings in the choir and frequently works in the kitchen during church events. By the time they are in their early 40s, their children are nearly grown and in school. With involvement in the church, naturally comes involvement with its pastor, Brother David Love, who arrived there in 1999. Randy and Teresa become close friends with both Brother Love and his wife, him. Pastor Love was a good-looking guy, uh, very charismatic, very energetic. Everyone loved Pastor Love. A congregation's perception of pastoral humility and honesty has been found to be a strong predictor of its commitment to the church, especially in smaller churches like the New Hope Baptist Church in Independence. So it's very important that Pastor Love encourages such a perception. And in this, he certainly succeeds. And Randy and Teresa Stone were lucky to have such a man as the head of their church. It was just a very, very close-knit church community. And Randy and Pastor Love, by all accounts, were what you would consider best friends. The couple also spends time together at the insurance office, where each has an office of their own. When couples work together day in and day out, it isn't always a good thing for the marriage. But in this case, it seems to be fairly harmonious. Not a lot of people can get along great working a few feet from their spouse every day, but they did it, and by all accounts, it seemed to work out just great for the two of them. 
The only work-related problem that Teresa reports to investigators involves a strange man who came to the office once when both Teresa and Randy were working, and then another time when only Randy was there. My husband said he came back once when he was there by himself. Uh, you know who this guy is? No, I have, we have never seen him. How old was this? I, I don't even remember what he was asking for. I did, did, he look, did he look homeless or anything? Or? Yes, yes he did. He, I, well, the credit unit is very cold because he had on a very heavy coat. Mm -hmm. I think he had a mustache. He was pretty tall. Though he never made any specific threats, the Stones consider this man an unwelcome and potentially dangerous presence. Has this man come into the office a third and final time on this fateful March 31st? Police must find out. After such an encounter, Randy takes it upon himself to have some sort of defense in the building. What guns do you know of any of in the office or anywhere? The only one that I know of that he has yeah. was a little bitty thing. Black gun? Yes. That's what you said earlier. Little bitty thing. It's little. Like, what do you keep it? I don't even like to touch that. I am pretty positive he kept it in the drawer at the back of his credenza. Unfortunately, on March 31st, 2010, Randy is found dead and defenseless on the floor of his office by his wife, Teresa. The first officer on the scene happens to be from New Hope Baptist Church, and he knows Randy and Teresa very well. He's stunned by what he finds and does his best to comfort Teresa. Pastor Love and his wife, Kim, arrive at the scene of the crime as soon as they hear what has happened. Any concerned church leader would do the same thing. And of course, Teresa's mom and dad, the first people she's called upon discovering Randy's body, get there as soon as they can. Of course, the uppermost question in everybody's mind is who could have done this? Who would have wanted a stand-up guy like Randy Stone dead? He has been in an affair with someone. Several years ago, he did. Randy was killed not by a stranger, but by someone he knew. One of the biggest pieces of evidence is in a trash can a couple of feet from Randy Stone's body. There has never been a better time to join AARP. This special offer gives you exclusive access to hundreds of AARP discounts, programs, and services that will add real value to your life. As a member, you can get discounts on glasses and eye exams, save on prescription drugs not covered by Medicare, but you can also save on travel, hotels, restaurants, concert tickets, and so much more. I didn't know that. AARP helps members access exclusive benefits like Medicare supplement insurance, even auto insurance. You can use that. AARP offers financial tips, career resources, and tools that may help you avoid identity theft and scammers. That's good to know. Pick up the phone now to join AARP. One year for just $12. That's 25% off the regular membership price. You'll even get a second membership included free. And you'll receive AARP the magazine filled with information and articles important to you. Plus, you'll get hundreds of benefits and an additional free gift if you call now. And you don't have to be retired to join AARP. You can join at 50 for instant access to many member benefits. For 60 years, AARP has fought to protect your Social Security, Medicare, and more. That sounds good to me. Now you know how AARP helps people like us take on today. So don't miss your chance to join now. Call or go online now to take advantage of this special offer. One year for just $12. That's a savings of 25% off the regular membership price. And you'll get a second AARP membership for anyone in your home free. And get a full year subscription to AARP the magazine filled with information and articles important to you. Plus, you get the AARP mobile app that connects you to local events and activities near you. And as a free gift, we'll include this insulated trunk organizer. So don't miss this chance to save 25% and get one year for just $12. Call 800-400-9312. You didn't start a business just to keep the lights on. You're here to sell more today than yesterday. You're here to win. Shopify built the best converted checkout on the planet. Like with just one tap, ridiculously fast acting, sky high sales stacking, champion to check out. That's the good stuff right there. 
So if your business is in it to win it, win with Shopify. Guys, this is how I found the latest viral shoes at the Hot Device. All the kids are obsessing over these right now. I love the pink stitching that Fab Kids did on these. These are a no fuss lace. They're gonna be easy to put on and off. I love the all over black and white dino print look. They light up. I'm loving the fun, bright pop of pink. They have a Sherpa lining that goes all the way throughout the shoe. The quality for the price is amazing. Get shoes from just $5 plus free shipping on orders over $10 from fabkids.com. You know what I love about Quick Hit Slots? It's the mobile slots game that gives you those authentic Vegas thrills. Quick Hit Slots has all the games that no one loves. And best of all, the jackpot. Download Quick Hit Slots for free and get a 6 million coin bonus. Make every day a winning day. I'm a dog. Since my owners got me a spot pet insurance plan, they're getting cash back on covered vet bills. Good boys like us rack up some bad vet bills. The spot plans help my owners focus on our care, not the cost. Choose spot. Customizable pet plans you both will love. Are you or a loved one between the ages of 50 to 20 years old? If you are younger than 80 years old, do you receive Social Security, Disability, or Medicare? If you answered yes, you may qualify for $30,000 in funeral insurance for only pennies a day. The average funeral costs around $11,000, and Social Security only pays $255, leaving your loved ones to pay the balance. Call now to see if you qualify for $30,000 in funeral expense coverage from Senior Legacy Life. Your rate will never increase. Your benefits will never decrease, and there is no medical exam, even if you have a pre-existing disease or illness. Don't be a financial burden to your family. Lock in your rate by completing an application over the phone right now. Will you qualify for funeral insurance up to $30,000 for only pennies a day? Find out by calling Senior Legacy Life. Call 1-800-300-3341 to speak with a licensed insurance agent. That's 1-800-300-3341. Why has America accepted the wait for payday? When life doesn't wait for you to get paid. Introducing MyPay from Chime, a revolutionary new way of getting your pay when you want. Get up to $500 of your pay for payday. No interest, no credit check, no mandatory fees. When any day is payday, it's a good day. Get paid when you say with MyPay. Get started at Chime.com. The murder of Randy Stone shocks the suburban town of Independence, Missouri. Randy and Teresa Stone, married almost 20 years, are apparently as happy and God-fearing a couple as you might ever meet. One horrible afternoon, Teresa Stone's life changes forever when she finds the body of her husband slumped on the floor of her own office. I don't know who she was. It's crazy. But I didn't, I didn't want to touch him. I was so scared. One of the things police ruled out immediately was suicide. There was no gun found at the scene. In fact, police do find a gun at the scene, but it's Randy Stone's work gun, and it hasn't been fired. He said he has this one small gun. Okay, we found that. He did. No other guns? No. Okay. They also find a hunting knife, but it too has no connection to the crime. Police rule out robbery as a motive because there's money left on his desk in the office. Randy Stone also had his wallet in his back pocket. So a robbery seemed out of question. Given the position of the body, it seems evident that Randy was killed not by a stranger, but by someone he knew. They thought from the beginning that whoever killed Randy Stone was probably someone that he knew. They just didn't know who. But evidence so far is scanty. There's no unusual fingerprints, no muddy footprints, and no murder weapon. But what police do find is a shell casing lying on the ground near Randy Stone's body. And with a little forensic work, a shell casing can tell you a lot. It appeared Randy had been shot with a 40 caliber. During their investigation, police check the phone in Randy's office and find something interesting. Early in the investigation, police learned that the first number that Teresa Stone dialed after finding her husband's body was not 911. It was her parents. They tell her to call the emergency number, and she does. 
But the question remains, why didn't she call an ambulance right off the bat? Of course, in a stressful situation, a person might behave in ways that seem odd later on. But it did raise a small flag. Detectives delve deep into their eight-hour interview with Teresa Stone, and cracks in the facade of her marriage appear quickly. No affairs on the side or anything like that. He hasn't had an affair with someone. And just be honest. Several years ago, he did. But that was right after the outbreak. Okay. A long time ago. And did it it cause any friction that you guys were wanting to get separated? No. No. And never had to leave the residence or anything? No one left the residence or anything? No. Never. Investigators collect every instance of conflict Randy Stone has in his life. But there aren't many. Randy Stone had been keeping the books for New Hope. And early in Pastor Love's tenure there, Randy discovers $30,000 missing from the missionary fund. He was upset about the finances and the way that the finances were being handled. And that was no secret. Pastor Love is asked to account for it, but angrily denies any wrongdoing. It must have been difficult for Randy to bring it up in the first place, given how much admiration and respect he had for the pastor. And soon, Randy's trust in Pastor Love is regained to the point of having him counsel the Stones when their marriage runs into trouble. That's the sort of person Randy is, a religious man inclined to forgiveness. Well-liked as he is, Randy Stone's funeral is a crowded affair. Friends, family, clients, and well-wishers. And there are a number of additional guests as well. That day, members of the Independence Police Department were in that church, and they recorded the stirring beautiful eulogy delivered by Pastor David Love. You see, there's nothing more that we can do for Randy Stone. Nothing more we can do for him. He'll never have another thought in this body, another emotion, another hunger pain. He'll never be able to sign another promise or kiss his wife on this side of glory. Randy Stone's name was on the sign over his office, Randy Stone Insurance Agency. How many here really know that Teresa was the agent of that place? <laughs> she was the cement and the glue, wasn't she? At that point, they weren't sure who was involved in the murder, but they thought it was likely that the murderer would be inside that church. And of course, it turns out they were right. But everyone Randy Stone knows is in the church today. So who is the killer? Investigators don't yet know who killed Randy Stone, but when the ballistic reports come in, they at least know what type of gun killed him. It appeared Randy had been shot with a 40 caliber. The casings from the gun were on the floor, and those were collected as evidence. Investigators know that Randy Stone likes to target shoot, and they also know how statistically likely it is for someone to be shot with their own gun. So a trip to one of Randy's target shooting ranges seems warranted. They were able to take some shell casings from one of the shooting ranges that he frequented, and those shell casings from his gun matched the casings at the scene where he was shot and killed. Spent bullets and casings are as individual as your fingerprint. They're compared under a slipstream microscope by forensic experts to determine whether they came from the same guy. It turns out those shell casings ended up matching Randy Stone's own 40 caliber weapon. We know that Randy was killed with his own car. Without you, I think it's clear as to get shell casing, okay? Well, he's in charge. The discovery that Randy Stone was killed with his own firearm raises a number of critical questions and gives the investigation an intensely new focus. So how does Randy Stone come to be shot with his own gun? This is a key question in the investigation. An entire prosecution will rest on it. You have to remember, Randy Stone was a Marine. He was also a gun enthusiast. And everyone around him said he never, ever would have turned his back on anyone in that office that he felt was a threat. It wasn't in his nature. He was a Marine. I want to know how. Anybody could get into that office, get that Glock, and shoot your husband. Because we're talking about only one guy, the Marine, 
Marines follow a very strict code on firearms handling. During training, there's a very strong emphasis on marksmanship and weapons handling. They practice weapons handling and dry firing for weeks before they ever shoot a live round. They're taught to secure their weapon, to always know where their weapon is, and to never turn their back on someone who might be their enemy. You get that training like Randy Stone did, and you have it for life. The man who killed your husband had the gun already. There's no way you could have got that gun away from, from your husband. Investigators now discover a new piece of evidence that sends the case ricochet into yet another surprising direction. One of the biggest pieces of evidence was in a trash can a couple of feet from Randy Stone's for children every month all you have to do is call the number on your screen or go online to loveshriners.org right now with your monthly gift because of people like you shriners hospital for children is able to make an everyday miracle happen for kids like me trying to tell you something? Is getting in and out of the bathtub becoming a safety concern? Are you worried about the cost of a bathroom remodel that could go on for weeks and weeks? Well, now you can have a gorgeous new bathroom shower that's safer at a price you can afford with a one-day jacuzzi bath remodel. And now they're bringing you this special TV offer. We're waiving all installation costs and postponing all payments for up to one year. Jacuzzi bath remodel has a design you'll love at a price you can afford. Literally, they came in the morning, did the demolition, and installed our bathtub in one day. I definitely wish we called Jacuzzi a lot sooner. Okay, so tell me, what are the two most common reasons people are calling Jacuzzi Bath Remodel right now? Well, maybe they're just tired of the old, worn-out eyesore of a bath. Often they have dated colors, tiles that might be cracking and fading, or impossible to clean grout. Christina, did you know that the average shower has up to 300 linear feet of grout? Honestly, I had no idea. Yeah, that's a whole lot of scrubbing. So that's definitely one of the reasons people call. And you'll love that the new bath or shower just rinses clean and resists mold and mildew. Now, another big reason people call is they've been feeling uneasy stepping over that tub to take a shower. And we're here to help with a safer, more stylish shower that you'll love and is custom designed for you. Every time I stepped over my old bathtub, I worried I might fall. I don't have those fears anymore. Jacuzzi bath remodel gave me a gorgeous shower that's safe too. It was done in the same day. We did not have to wait. It is amazing. amazing. Time is running out to take advantage of this special offer. When you call right now, we're waiving all installation costs with our Christina Across America offer and no interest and no payments for up to one year. 
Call now to schedule your free, no obligation, in-home design consultation. You can create your new bath or shower customized just for you. Installed in just one day from the most trusted name with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel. Call now. It's never been easier. Get your free design consultation, schedule your one-day installation, and start loving your new bath or shower right away. You can go from this to this. And from this to this, or even from this to all this in just one day. I did not like my bathroom before and was embarrassed by it. Yeah. <laughs> this is unbelievable. It is stunning. I can't believe it. Time is running out to take advantage of this special offer. When you call right now, we're waiving all installation costs with our Christina Across America offer and no interest and no payments for up to one year. Call now to schedule your free, no obligation, in-home design consultation. You can create your new bath or shower customized just for you. Installed in just one day from the most trusted name with Jacuzzi Bath Remodel. Call now. Coming up next on True Crime Network. Ex-Marine and insurance agent Randy Stone is murdered in a case that has all of Independence, Missouri abuzz. And although the gun that killed Randy has disappeared, ballistic evidence indicates that the weapon has been owned by Randy himself. Now, newly discovered evidence is about to turn the case on its head. So detectives, as they're going through the office looking for evidence, look in the trash can feet away from where Randy Stone lies dead. And in that trash can, they find a discarded love letter. And it wasn't crumpled up. There really wasn't even any real attempt to destroy this letter. It was in about nine pieces. It took some scotch tape to put the letter back together. This was very clearly a love letter from someone to Teresa Stone. Initially, in speaking to detectives, Teresa had admitted that her husband had engaged in extramarital affairs. Teresa's urge to highlight her husband's wrongdoing is, in fact, a common prelude to confessing her own indiscretions. She has to build that little mound of moral high ground before exposing herself. There's no doubt that Teresa is committed to her Christian faith, that she's earnestly dedicated to the church. But human nature is such that the lineaments of dedication, of loyalty, of love can become blurred, and this is part of what happens to Teresa. Police, over several hours of interrogations of Teresa Stone, finally start getting her to admit that this was more than just a secret admirer, that in fact she had had a 10-year love affair with Pastor David Love. Have you ever put it to David about that love in the past? It got stronger as the years went on. Okay, so it started off as a just like, you know, close friends, good friends, mm -hmm. you know. Then it grew to sexual love. So you guys, you guys fell in love. So we now know this was not an affair that lasted six months or a year. They had been seeing each other for almost 10 years. Where were you guys going when you meet? When you guys were going to be sexually involved? Um, well, we never planned it when we were deeply involved. I mean, of course, I would call you when Randy would leave, you know, and if I had, if I knew he was going to be gone for, you know, an hour, then um, he would come to the office if it was convenient for him. So we're talking your office? Yeah. Um, your home? Yes. Twice. It was harder there. In his office? The church? Uh, yes. Kim Love notices her husband receiving texts on unfamiliar looking phone. Her suspicions are aroused, and she soon finds her suspicions are justified. It turns out Kim, the pastor's wife, found several burner phones in their home. The kind of phones that don't have a name attached to them the kind of phones that are very difficult to trace. And she didn't just find one phone. She found multiple phones in the home. And those phones we now know were used between Pastor Love and Teresa Stone to conceal their 10-year affair. 
Teresa claims that matters come to a head about two weeks before the murder on St. Patrick's Day, when David Love and his wife show up at the office. Pastor walked in, and Randy said, Pastor, I, I really don't have anything to say to you. I, I really don't. This is when the secrets come out. There's no doubt about the affair between Teresa and David, and now... David Love wants to talk about Randy's own past indiscretions with other women, and more recently, with pornography. He starts talking to him about his internet problems, you know, his uh, pornography problems, his, you know, stuff like that. And Randy said, that's all behind us. You know, we've gotten over that. And this is all stuff he and the Stones have talked about in their counseling sessions. To bring it up now, it just compounds the betrayal. Kim Love, who has long suspected her husband, is just plain angry. Did you and the wife have words though? Yeah. I told her that she wasn't a very good wife, Pastor Slane. Investigators soon uncover more of Teresa's strange activity on the day of the murder. And one of the admissions that investigators gently cry from Teresa is that after the discovery of Randy's body, she went to the bathroom of a local rental car agency and destroyed the burner phone that Pastor Love had given her. After you found your husband, you left the car seat, you go to the bathroom, and while you were there, you destroyed the phone. You know what that looks like? How did that explain everything? Not the actions of a completely innocent person. On the day after Randy's murder, Teresa has a conversation that strikes investigators as strange. Detectives knew that she had been asking a lot of questions about Randy Stone's life insurance policies. Even in the day after her husband's murder, she was asking about the life insurance policies, which seemed very odd for a grieving widow less than 24 hours after her husband's death. Pastor Love's behavior had been odd as well. The very day after Randy Stone's body was found, the pastor gets a call from an old friend who asked him how he's holding up after the death of a friend and congregant. Like a river glorious, David Love says, quoting the title of an old and cherished hymn. In interviews, detectives repeatedly refer to the idea of confession being good for the soul. They know that, say, in Catholic culture, confession occurs in a small chamber in virtual secret. While other strains of Christian belief, including Teresa's, hold that confession, like faith itself, ought to be shouted from the rooftops. But Teresa's faith has been exploited by Pastor Love. He kept throwing Bible verses mm -hmm. up at me. And what other uh, Bible characters did in the Bible. And how they murdered and God still blessed them and stuff like that. And I was like... And I kept telling him, I'm like, that was then. This is now. And in the interrogation room, Teresa Stone is finally circling closer to the truth. You told your parents specifically that Randy had been shot. You told the 911 operator you think you might have called him. You never told him that he had been shot. You kept that to yourself. When you talked to the ambulance dispatcher, person who needs to know what's going on there, a medical, you never told him that he was shot. When somebody told you that he was shot because you knew he was shot, and you didn't want us to know. He has been being checked and told me. Say Brother Love. To the office. Teresa finally recognizes this man for what he did. He said that he would kill for me. He said, I will do anything for you. Police have no shortage of questions for Teresa Stone. Why had she destroyed her phone the night of the murder? Why had she been so concerned with Randy's life insurance? And why hadn't she called police immediately on learning what David Love had done? But for now, Teresa is happy to incriminate David Love while maintaining her own innocence. I am not going to protect him anymore. Finally, investigators have something close to confirmation of the killer's identity. But their suspect, it turns out, has left town. Randy Stone had his suspicions about his own wife. 
they learn the shocking lengths to which Pastor Love was willing to go. It's no wonder that Randy never saw it coming. This summer, we're in a race against time as temperatures rise. Abused and neglected animals across the country are suffering right now in the unbearable scorching heat. They're thirsty and panting, chained outside with no water, and many are desperately trying to hang on for just one more day. Extreme heat can have a major impact on, on animals, and we see that all the time. You know, without shade, to, to be without shelter, without adequate water, and basically just left out there dealing with the baking sun all day. Will you come forward to help save an animal in distress today? Visit joinaspca.org. Call this toll-free number or scan the code on your screen to be counted for this life-saving appeal. Donate now, and with your gift of just $19 a month, you can help save an animal's life this summer. Go online, call, or scan now. It's just 63 cents a day. We will put your gift to work right away, rescuing animals who might not survive if we don't get to them soon. But the situation is urgent, and tomorrow could be too late for an animal who is suffering in the sweltering heat right now. In my mind, one more hour is not acceptable. These animals have suffered enough. But this is no way for any animal to live. And it's heartbreaking to imagine what they are going through. They're desperately trying to hang on, but time is running out. Your support is the help they need right now. Don't wait. These animals have been dealing with that environment and probably much worse for a long time. So visit our website, call this number, or scan the code on your screen, and donate just $19 a month. Do it in the next 10 minutes, and we'll send you this free welcome kit, including our limited edition Animal Champion t-shirt. We cannot put an end to this type of animal cruelty without the generous support of the ASPCA donors. If there ever was a time, this is it. So if you sign up in the next 10 minutes, we'll send you this free welcome kit, including this beautiful t-shirt, for taking action right away to save an animal's life this summer. These animals have suffered enough, and maybe you're going to be the reason why those animals will never have to suffer again. We're in a race against time to reach vulnerable animals who are barely hanging on. Help rescue an animal today. Go online, call, or scan right now Hey, True Crime Network viewers, we want your feedback. Take our quick survey and tell us which shows you like and dislike so we can make our network even better. Just visit truecrimenetworktv.com slash feedback. A mysterious murder rocks the Missouri town, but the sordid story behind it is even more shocking. You know something you have to fix them? You're not going to be able. You're not going to be able to get through this. A bereaved wife tells part of what she knows. I'm on my way back to the office. That's my doctor in the office now. He sent me a text and told me that he was seriously urgent. Do not go back to the office by yourself. Randy Stone and David Love were friends. It wouldn't be a stretch to say, but at least at one time. Randy considered Pastor Love his best friend. It's no wonder that Randy never saw it coming. He said he walked to the office, and he just ate the teddy bear book. He said he did this. What is wrong with me? So he said he didn't drink. Hey, he said he just ate the teddy bear book. The detective's suspicions about David Love are now nearly confirmed after many slow and grueling hours in the interrogation room. I've always thought of him as an honest man. No, he's not an honest man because he's because he's had an affair with one of his 
congregation members for almost two years. And with the confirmation of Love's guilt, even experienced detectives are stunned at the depth of the pastor's betrayal of his friends, his church, and his God. We looked at this casket, a body here, all the flowers, the things gathered around, we say, but we anticipated he would grow old. We anticipated that we'd do more things together. What's with the word anticipation and death being swallowed up in victory? How could this be good at all? Investigators are happy to finally hear Teresa confess what David Love told her, but there's still a lot left to confirm. What part did Teresa herself play in this crime? Where exactly is the gun that killed Randy Stone? And where is Love, who no longer seems to be at the church or even living in independence? Teresa Stone finally admits that, according to Pastor Love, he drives the gun 20 miles out of town and throws it where nobody will ever find it. And nobody ever does. You told me you were saving the gun 20 miles away? Yeah, that's what he told me. He was going to save it, but he took it there? No, he, he said he, he took it 20 miles away. And as it turns out, David Love himself, along with his wife Kim, had moved to another state when the former pastor is working as a truck driver. The lead detective travels to South Carolina with another officer, and they have David Love's supervisor call him into the office, supposedly to sign some paperwork. Much of David Love's behavior indicates some degree of a narcissistic personality disorder. So it's no surprise he doesn't expect to be tracked down in this way. Finding detectives waiting for him in the depot office is a total surprise to him. Immediately after seeing the officer, Pastor Love appears to turn and flee, and officers give chase. Detectives have seen this kind of reaction from suspects before. If they have any doubt of David Love's guilt, his behavior today dispels it. As it turns out, however, Pastor Love is not attempting to flee. He just wanted to pick up his wife so the car wouldn't be left behind at the depot when he went away with the police. Pastor Love has returned to Missouri without further incident. Meanwhile, Teresa's strategy throughout her interrogations is to minimize her own involvement by stressing things she truly hadn't done, while trying to rhetorically ignore the actual questions the detectives are asking. This is a common strategy learned by most people in childhood, and Teresa, it turns out, is very good at answering questions the detectives aren't asking. So why the question just in the interviews, she constantly speaks about how much she hates guns, even though no one has accused her of pulling the trigger. Questions about your guns. When we talk about guns, you seem to be very uncomfortable when you talk about them. I don't, I don't like them. I don't like to talk about them. I don't like guns. I don't like to touch them. Having committed to blaming her former lover, Teresa goes all in, hoping that once he's been fed whole to the detectives, they'll be satisfied. But if that's what she thinks, she doesn't know homicide detectives. Iconic supermodel Cindy Crawford is more radiant than ever. And with her gorgeous age-defying skin, Us Weekly says whatever she's doing, it's clearly working. What's Cindy's secret to keeping her skin looking so youthful year after year? It's meaningful beauty. And now, there's really big news. Our best system ever features new age-defying formulas. Meaningful Beauty is created by world-renowned cosmetic specialist, Dr. Jean-Louis Sabah. He's been hailed as an anti-aging guru and a skin magician who's been honored with Elle magazine's 